Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in-home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, sunshines, and hello, Julie. How the heck are you? I am good. How are you? I, I am fantastic. I am full of energy and just ready to roll. Nice. Yeah, I'm one of the only ones. I, we have a few sickies in the office, so. Yeah, yeah the crud. Yeah, I know, it's going around, but mm-hmm. thankfully not not the crud. No. Yeah. Anywho, so we've got a good topic today. Yes, but before we start the topic. Yes. Can we just stop for a second and reflect on how cute we are today? Oh, yes. Let's do it. Look at me. Look at me. What does it say? This girl has one hot face for radio. <laughs> Check this one out. Oopsie. Yours says, hello, sunshine. Yeah, hello, sunshine. <laughs> I love that. We got these for Christmas. Yep. And we haven't yet used them, so we're very excited to look adorable today. Yes, Alyssa is in charge of all of our wardrobe, and she does a fantastic job. Yes. yes. For coming in future episodes, you'll be more attire that um, Alyssa gave me for Christmas. So oh my, oh my. I'm excited to share it. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the message that we're putting out there, but also the clothes. Oh my, yes, <laughs> yes. Very good. So yeah, back to uh, the topic. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. So Inga, do you remember the last time you ever took a tumble? I do. I do. It actually wasn't a tumble. It was like a straight down onto my boomerosity. Just <laughs> Boom, happened so fast. Yes. And again, we haven't said the topic of the show yet, but I will tell you in all the research that we did, um, I never found that one symptom of of the fall is due to having a temper tantrum, but that is exactly what happened to me. <laughs> you were having a temper tantrum? I was 100% having it. And a temper you fell on your keister. I did, yes. Oh. Lesson learned. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. No, uh, it was uh, changing out some water for one of the rams in the winter time, and I don't know. I was mad about something. I'm sure grumbling my way out there, and just boom. You forgot to walk I, like I a was, penguin. Yeah, I forgot about that, but I was very humbled. <laughs> And it did meet both of Kevin's criteria, painful and expensive, because I did end up having to be seen. Oh no, at Med North. Yep. Oh. And uh, I'm pretty sure I missed a day of work, and uh, but just... they did get me straightened out because Med North is awesome. But <laughs> anyway, so you jammed everything. I did. Yes. Oh goodness Straight gracious. down. So, so uh, anywho, uh, do not have a tenter- temper tantrum and think that God won't just take your feet right out from under you and put you back in your place. Inga Lou, behave. <laughs> yeah. What about you? You had a pretty spectacular oh, fall I had once. A spectacular one, and um, so my kids had this contraption. <laughs> it's, it was like a rolly thing, a rolly, it's a, it was hand, a homemade too, so okay. nothing fancy, but it was like a like log. Like a ball? It oh, was a log. A, log, a rolly about log. About this long and round, and there was a little divot cut in the middle, and then you put a straight board, and you stand on it, <laughs> and you work on your balance. <laughs> well... <laughs> Moral of the story is Julie has no balance. <laughs> but, so my, my kids got on there and they just were going back and forth. Mike got on there and he was looking all, you know, just really graceful. Later when everybody was gone, I was walking past it and I looked at it and I go, that doesn't look that hard. Oh, and I no. stood on that thing and I mean, I, one foot is all it took. <laughs> one foot and I just power drove myself into the ground. And the dogs walked over and licked on me, made sure I wasn't dead. (laughs) And I just laid there and just first I had to breathe. (laughs) Then I slowly moved my, went from my toes to my nose, making sure that I was uh, still on earth because I heard and felt crunching and nothing actually ended up being hurt except my pride. <laughs> but then I thought I heard somebody driving up the driveway, so I had to heft up and get going and act like everything was cool. Oh, I'm fine. Everything's nothing. fine. So 
Anyway, it was so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, you promptly actually burned it. And then, <laughs> and then later on, they're like, where's that balance thing? I really want to... I have no idea. They're finding out today <laughs> on this episode that you burned it. And that's what happened to it. And we don't miss it at all. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it makes for a great story. Oh, my God. I, I vaguely, well, not vaguely, I actually really remember you telling that story when it first happened. And man, I'm very glad you're okay because it could have been really bad. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was, it was, it was very, very, now that I can laugh and when I look back it, it had to be hilarious oh my but gosh. at first I really thought for sure I would that was I was, <laughs> that, was it. that was that was, it was the nice end. knowing y'all I'm gonna just lay here forever now oh my gosh never get up that's not the same time that you got attacked by the bees right oh. in your yard that's a different story yes. okay we'll save that one for a different day yes please please <laughs> all right well moving right into the verse of the week actually we have Psalms 28 7 The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exults and with my song, I give thanks to him. I love it. That's a good one, huh? Yes. Yes. Once again, I picked this verse because of the word strength, Mm -hmm. because of the topic. uh, We're going to be talking about internal and external strength. Mm -hmm. So that that was why I chose that one today. Isn't it funny how the verses just come to you too? Yeah. Like you, you know what you're looking for and then boom, there it is. Yep. Exactly. (laughs) For sure. Exactly. Well, I would, I would love it. Um, if our listeners out there had any Bible verses that they wanted to share with us to send Mm -hmm. those into the caregiven podcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us your story, why the verse resonates with you. And again, if you don't have any, you know, any big story to go along with it, just send the verse because we love looking through those and, and, you know, like Julie does picking through those and applying them to the topic of the day. Right. Yeah, we we would love to get some input from everybody. Yeah. Just keep them coming in. For sure. Well, Julie, um, let's start with your uplifting story. Yes, I actually, once again, this all goes to the topic that we'll be sharing (laughs) shortly, but um, it's basically Bible prayers for aging with grace. And (laughs) so it says um, that the gal was talking and she said, old age is no place for sissies. And that is something that her 90-year-old plus mother had said, (laughs) and she was 60 years old, and she was totally starting to get it. (laughs) You know, it's it's not easy aging, Mm -hmm. and so what what can we do about that? And not only physically, but, you know, emotionally and spiritually, we should, you know, be stronger. And so there was some really good um, Bible prayers here. Um, Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent spent frustrated by something that used to be a piece of cake but now is taking so much out of you be like the psalmist let god know he needs to hear the righteous flourish like a palm tree and grow like a cedar in lebanon in old age they will still produce fruit and it said um i wouldn't want to be in my 20s again why because if anything with age we acquire wisdom and that's what produces fruit Mm. Uh, this is one is for me. Uh, gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Okay, if it's not just being older, that's the advantage. It's about learning from experience, taking the right lessons, loving the Lord, and learning from God that when gray hair can be a crown of glory. <laughs> Take a look at my silvery locks. I'm not ready to do that. <laughs> I know. I think I had that on one of the previous podcast episodes, something about maybe embracing the gray yeah, um, I had to put it all back to one color. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. With the gray. Right, right. Um, it and basically Philippians one six that uh, basically we're all no matter our age a work in progress. And then the the one I'd like to finish on is grandchildren are the crown of the aged and the glory of children is their parents. And that's Proverbs seventeen six. Some things are truly worth the wait, like grandchildren. We had our first this summer. Well, this was the lady that was writing this. Her a beautiful baby Silas, and we expected our second one in December. This one was named Rick, like me. Another Rick Hamlin. No, something better. What glory awaits? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Well, it occurred to me that um, we always like to pretend that people don't know what the topic is about, but I'm pretty (laughs) sure the title is on everything, (laughs) every every bit of uh, (laughs) podcast info that's out there. So here's all the drama. You just took all the way the drama and the anticipation. I know. And Alyssa's been shaking her head for like... (laughs) 
50 episodes. Like, these morons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So I you never just, th- you were today years old when you figured that out? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for bursting my bubble. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. I thought we were so sneaky. Oh, man. No. We are giving you a a tip of what it is. <laughs> Here's the next little tidbit. <laughs> Yeah, not so much. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, I want to tell you guys today about Brayden Baker. And Brayden Baker is a young man. When he was 10 years old, um, his dog Chewy actually chewed up his expensive hearing aids. So Brayden had hearing aids. Uh And unfortunately, the insurance would not cover the cost to replace them. Now, for Brayden, it worked out okay because his family could afford new hearing aids, but he realized that many others could not. Um, and insurance systems don't always make such devices easy to access. I think we've seen that actually with some of even our own employees and clients. Yeah. So anyway, um, he he this really got to him and he it bothered him that not everyone would be able to get that hearing aid replacement. So he went ahead and started a GoFundMe project to help others in need. And he is actually now 14 years old. He travels across the world delivering hearing devices to those who can't afford them. And often he gets to watch young people hear for the very first time. Oh, my word. Is that cool? Yeah. What a kid. <clears throat> yeah. Huh. Anyway, so here's to Braden. And the reason that I wanted to um, talk about this, this story today or why it hit me is because the topic, of course, is falls. Mm-hmm. And it's really important that everyone listens up right now because <laughs> falls are a very big deal um, yeah. in any population. Yeah. And, you know, luckily you and I, in our stories, we, we were young and we were able to bounce back from those, but it doesn't always go that way for everyone. And so we wanted to spend quite a bit of time today talking to, um, talking to our listeners about, you know, prevention and reasons and how to get to the bottom of things. And yeah, yeah. no, it, it really impacts you. And as you get older, it does, even at my age, I notice that if, if there's a situation, a sickness or a injury, it takes longer to heal. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as we get older and, and older, mm-hmm. um, sometimes we cannot yeah. recoup from that situation. So what can we also do maybe to even prevent um, of a slip or a fall. Mm-hmm. But um, so they say that uh, falls are a major threat to older adults' quality of life, often causing a decline in self care, ability, and participation in physical and social activities. Mm-hmm. Fear of falling can lead to further limiting of activities, independence <laughs> of injury. And comorbidity is a serious problem, both in terms of contributing to the cause of the fall and to the outcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they also say that even um, like a lesser fall can lead to a loss of self-confidence. And, you know, anytime that happens, then you're probably looking at a reduced quality of life. Oh, gosh. You know, um, when we go leave every day after work, you and I both have chores to do. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, at this time of the year, um, it's dark mm-hmm. when we leave the office. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do the penguin walk <laughs> all the time. And yeah. I know that I look goofy I look silly (laughs) but I'm just knowing that if I go down it's not a good idea (laughs) right well I think as yeah we're less resilient as we age but we get smarter yeah that wisdom stuff kicks in and you're like you know I'm okay looking a little silly the way I'm walking to prevent myself from completely wiping out (laughs) oh yeah because it it, with the the ice and and everything it can happen before you even know Mm -hmm. and even with the most preparation you have to realize that stuff is going to happen yes and and hopefully when it does nothing real detrimental happens and that's something you and I had talked about (coughs) is um it's really important that people understand that falls are going to happen yeah you know we we talk about these things and we discuss the preventative measures and things like that and so we want to as best practice always try to prevent them but understanding that fall risks are fall risks so we mitigate to the best of our ability yeah Um, yeah and it doesn't matter if if you're in the hospital mm -hmm. you're in assisted living nursing home um home care yes people quite often tell us that the reason they want us there is only for fall protection. Mm -hmm. And that's all good and fine. And we are a huge portion of that Mm -hmm. equation. But the other thing is, is we have to be thinking about everybody around Mm -hmm. when it comes to a fall. Yes. Because if you're going to go and try to catch somebody, you're both going to go down. Yes. It's going to really hurt more than just one person. Yeah. For sure. So lots cool. to think about. Well, this article, um, it's actually called Prevention of Falls in the Elderly, and it's authored by Dr. Colin Tidy, I believe is how you pronounce it. And so I'd love to just go through it. Um, 
you know, first we can talk about the epidemiology of this. And I did look it up. I'm not too proud to admit that I wanted to make sure I was pronouncing that correctly. So <laughs> that is what I believe it was Google said. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, falls and fall-related injuries are a common and serious problem for older people. People age 65 and older have the highest risk of falling, with 30% of people older than 65 and 50% of people older than 80 falling at least once a year. About 5% of falls in older people who live in the community um, live in the community result in a fracture or hospitalization, and between 10 and 25% of falls in nursing homes and hospitals will also result in a fracture. And granted, usually if you are in the nursing home or in the hospital, you're you're maybe in a little bit worse shape. But mm -hmm. let's take a minute to just understand this. 5% of people living in the community versus 10 to 25% in the nursing home or hospitals, which goes back to reiterate the point that a fall risk is a fall risk. Right. And just because you're in a nursing home or because you are in a hospital does not mean that you are not, um, that you may not still fall. And, and those are pretty big numbers. It's kind of shocking, actually. It's really shocking. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so the risks of falls, let's talk about that a little bit, Jules. Yep. So there's a lot of different reasons that you can fall. Um, and so some of the main reasons is uh, somebody that's over 80 years old, mm -hmm. uh, female gender, mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of the reason they think that there's more females is because we tend to go to the doctor yeah. more. We're better reporters. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, a low weight, mm -hmm. uh, history of fall in the previous year and dependency in activities of daily living mm -hmm. and orthostatic hypertension, hypotension. Mm. So what th that is, is if you're sitting mm. on the bed or you're sitting on the chair and you go to stand up <clears throat> and you feel woozy or lightheaded dizziness, right. um, that's when your blood pressure is trying to adjust right. to your position. Mm -hmm. So um, that happens a lot and people don't realize it. So right. that's when we tell people, when you stand up, make sure you're feeling good. Yeah, go slow to go fast. Right. And interestingly, um, a lot of times we get called in to provide home care in situations like this, maybe for an impulsivity or something where the individual is, you know, they're just trying to get up and going so fast that they don't let themselves adjust. Right. And then yep. it can cause big problems. Big, big yeah. problems. Yep. Uh, medication. <clears throat> it yep. can really um, throw you for a loop. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, polypharmacy, which is again, many medications. Mm -hmm. And so you've really got to know the ins and outs of that. Alcohol misuse, we'll talk about that a little later. Mm -hmm. uh, diabetes, confusion and cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. Dementia has a big mm -hmm. issue with that because your brain is not able to talk to your limbs. Yep. It's not communicating. Yeah, yep. as quickly or as efficiently as it should. Right. Uh, vision mm -hmm. is always a big one. Uh, disturbed balance or coordination, for whatever reason. Gait disorders, urinary incontinence, you know... <laughs> We have to tell people all the time, if you think you're going to have to get ready to go to the, the bathroom, you better start now. Right. And don't wait till you're almost going to have an uh, issue. Well, and we had a client one time that we were helping through the night and it was this, he would wake up with such urgency feeling like he needed to urinate and then he would move so fast yep. that he would just go down. Yeah. And I mean, hard, he would go down. Oh yeah. And he <clears> actually <throat> then probably had that. Uh, what we were talking about earlier was that orthostatic hypotension. Yep. yep. And then there's also environmental um, factors, including home hazards. We're going to talk about that briefly. And inappropriate footwear. Mm -hmm. um, didn't we have a caregiver that even on the coldest days, she still wore flip-flops? I think so. Yeah. She just hated shoes. Yeah. Crazy. Burr. Uh, muscle <laughs> weakness and depression. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, that's a lot of different things that can cause problems. Right, right. Yep. So basically, um, the risks of injury, we can talk about that a little bit. Um, one, one thing that, you know, basically is a, is a pretty obvious risk is if you have weak bones. Mm -hmm. So with increasing age, um, conditions which predispose to weakness and fracture can occur, for example, osteoporosis, um, osteomalacia. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Um, Paget's disease of bone and then... Metastasis. Yep. So the osteoporosis is actually when your bone's strength is weakening mm -hmm. um, and they're more susceptible to a fracture. Uh, very common. And it starts in, in uh, women over 
50 years old. And actually, I just went to the, <clears throat> my yearly checkup mm -hmm. was last week, and that was one of the questions that the physician asked me is, um, how much calcium are you giving me? And uh, giving me, giving, <laughs> <laughs> taking. And um, he gave me uh, a, a pamphlet on mm. how I could be getting more calcium and more vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I'm pretty good where I need to be right now. But he said, you just can't take that for granted. Mm -hmm. Most of it we should be able to get through our diet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of people that don't drink milk or, or, or lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. You know, um, here in the in the valley, we get a lot of inversions. So mm -hmm. the vitamin D in the winter can certainly be an issue. Um, but I thought that was interesting. I thought, oh, geez, <laughs> this means I'm getting old. He's starting to bring out the <laughs> calcium and vitamin D info. <laughs> oh, great. Um, that osteomalacia is just a softening of the bones. Um, Paget's disease of the bone is a condition that disrupts the body's hormonal bone, um, normal bone process of when they're, it's recycling and mm -hmm. building itself back up. And it happens mostly in the pelvis, the skull, the spine, and the legs. And then uh, this uh, metastasis um, <laughs> to the bone is the tumor. And that's when you have like an advanced cancer mm -hmm. that is getting into the bone. Mm -hmm. um, this reminds me of the lady that we had that she, we called her the glass lady. Mm -hmm. Didn't her family call her the lady made of glass? Mm -hmm. Because she had such bad osteoporosis mm -hmm. that her favorite thing was to bake pies but she couldn't take the weight of the pie, bend over, and put it into the oven without breaking something. Oh. So we were there to help her bake her pies, but we were the heavy lifters. Right. Yeah. It's crazy what how much we take for granted. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so b another thing is just the predisposition to falls, right? So this would include um, risk factors listed above. And dementia actually is also a pretty um, particular risk factor for falls. Right, right. So some of the things that um, can be happening in your elder or yourself, uh, it's called poor self-protection. Mm -hmm. And one of that is a lack of protective subcutaneous fat. Mm -hmm. So I should be good for quite a while. <laughs> Check that one off the Check. list. Um, <laughs> neurological problems. Uh, falls associated with loss of consciousness, and that's if you have a syncope or vertigo. Mm -hmm. uh, motor and sensory problems, and uh, a lot of other factors, like all of the ones we already talked about mm -hmm. back at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when we're, when we're looking at, so the fall happens, right? So when we're looking at the history of it, there are some things that need to be considered, right? So we want to look at, was the fall an isolated event, or is it one of many falls? Is there a pattern of falls? So we've got to examine that first. Then we're going to look at what was the actual cause of the fall. Some things that can be attributed would be like tripping over a loose rug, um, trailing an electrical cable. And those are not medical problems, but they are going to require some type of a home safety assessment, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then what was the patient doing at the time of the fall? Is it something that involved exertion? Was it, you know, were they trying to get up? Were they trying to stand up? Were they already moving around? Were they having to look? bend, squat, look in a low cupboard, you know, what, 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 what were they doing? Right. Mm -hmm. Then we've got to look at, was there any loss of consciousness? Um, so basically like you said that syncope or like a blackout, this can be associated with cardiac or neurological symptoms. We need to look at that. And another thing, was there any warning before the fall? Right. Was there? So for me, no, there was no warning before <laughs> I fell right on my boomerosity. <laughs> The only blessing is I didn't spill the bucket of water all over myself because that would have been even more humbling. Well, we know how you get when you get covered with water. <laughs> I just, yeah, Disneyland. Yeah. Tragic episode. <laughs> Anywho. Um, then we have to look at how was the patient after the fall? Well, I was mad. I think you were laughing a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. But um, even if what we have to do is just once they get up, they're going to probably be quite shaken. Yes. But then we have to watch other other things for going them on, yeah. because yeah, the, a pain may actually come up later, mm -hmm. um, and also it it may um, just cause them a little bit of trauma where right. they're afraid. Mm -hmm. We've dealt with several clients that were not willing to get up um, and move around mm -hmm. because they were so scared to fall. Yeah, absolutely. And then also, I'm um, thinking about that. 
you know, one of the things that we get hired a lot for is to help people in the bath. Mm -hmm. The bathroom is a very scary place for some folks. It, absolutely. Getting yeah. in and out of the tub. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From just the slippery surface. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically understanding that um, after a patient has a fall, they may not be able to report exactly what happened. They might not even know what happened. So mm -hmm. if there is, if anybody witnessed it, that's a good thing to be able to talk to that person and see if they have insight as to what happened. Um, and then basically if the history suggests that, that it's like a tripping, um, you may want to look at eyesight and see, is there like a vision impairment what, what caused that? Sometimes I'm just not paying attention to where I'm going and I trip over a cord or something and that's just on me, but there might be other underlying issues for people. Yeah. One of the things that they talk about is look at the person's medications mm -hmm. and see if for some reason that's off. Yep. And we've had that. Mm -hmm. I remember one gal that, um, she was pretty cute. She was trying to keep a secret that she had fallen Yes, because she did not want to go to the nursing home. And she felt like if everybody knew that she was falling more and more regularly, that they were going to put her somewhere besides her beautiful home. Right. And so she happened to tell our caregiver, which was a, a blessing because a caregiver then told us, yes. we then nonchalantly talked to the family and said, hey, you know, um, probably mother needs to have an eval done because we're starting to see a pattern. Mm -hmm. And actually what it was, was they just simply had to tweak some of the medications. Mm -hmm. And then she was back to her baseline. Yeah. But boy, if she hadn't said something, if our caregiver hadn't been on b the ball and told us about it, right. you know, um, this could have really actually turned out quite tragic. Absolutely. Yeah. So it is good if you can look into it and figure out, you know, what's the underlying issue mm -hmm. and like that, make a, make a little med adjustment and yep. she's that was the best case rolling. scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Um, okay. So basically as you're looking at that past medical history or looking at meds, like you said, then also taking, um, note of history of any heart disease or diabetes is the patient, um, at risk or, you know, for TIAs or strokes, peripheral neuropathies, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my grandma was actually feeling quite dizzy whenever mm -hmm. she would stand up and then go to walk. Um, but it turned out that she actually ended up with a pacemaker mm. because her heart was doing funky things. Mm -hmm. But they were able to, once again, give her the thing that brought her back to her baseline. Mm -hmm. yep. So that was a wonderful thing. Yep. And just on a kind of a general health, general inquiry type situation or conversation, um, you're looking at is the appetite good and is the weight steady, right? Um, a negative reply might point to something more serious as an underlying issue. How is the mobility? Um, is it slow? Is it labored? Are there changes? And that question of um, nu n nourishment, mm -hmm. eating is a big deal. You had your client who wouldn't eat unless somebody was with her. Yes. Um, and a lot of people very often were like, what are you eating through the day? How often are you eating protein? Mm -hmm. What are the things that are going to keep you going because a lot of people just they just plumb lose mm -hmm. their interest in food yes and they just don't care and it's it becomes a job to eat right and and so therefore they are going to not be able to keep up right because their muscles just they have to have that energy yep well and like like you mentioned the gal that I was working with um there's a social component to eating mm -hmm. as well right mm -hmm. so she just wanted somebody to be there to have a meal with and that makes sense to me. Yeah. Just always keep yeah. it on top of those yeah. things. And, um, and so with the nutrition, you know, um, what is the protein that they do like? Do mm -hmm. they like scrambled eggs? Do they, you know, if they like eggs, hard boiled eggs, um, boost, mm -hmm. ensure those kinds of things have a ton. They're just packed full of stuff. Yep. But, you know, you have to know your person. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the whole body because you got to make sure that that's also not going to cause problems with whatever else is going right. on. So it's, it's complex. For sure. Yeah. You also want to look at what is like baseline? What's the normal functional status of the patient? Mm -hmm. um, you know, do they generally require assistance with, you know, activities of daily living? Is this just a one-off weird thing that happens? Right. <clears throat> right. And then how are the mental faculties? Yep. Is there any cognitive decline? Yep. So when we're looking at all of these issues about why did this fall happen or what is, why are these falls happening? Uh, that mental state is a big deal. Uh, is there a decline? Is there a reason that, um, were they alert and oriented, mm -hmm. uh, visual impairment? 
you know, when's the last time they went to the eye doctor? Mm -hmm. And um, macular degeneration is a big deal. And um, so what other kind of defects maybe they can't <clears throat> see to the side? Um, then we have the cardiovascular examinations that we already talked about. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, arrhythmia, arrhythmias and different things that are happening with your cardiac, mm -hmm. your heart. Yeah. Time out for just a second. I just have to ask everyone listening to this podcast to s please say a quick little prayer for my dad. Oh. He has a few, a little bit of cardiovascular stuff going on right now. So just say an extra prayer for him if you could. We can. All right. We would love to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there's neurological uh, things that can go on. And uh, muscle wasting is a, a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, muscle tone, basically <clears throat> use it or lose it, right? You have to get out of your recliner. You have to get out of bed and you have to do, even if it's just a couple laps around your kitchen island mm -hmm. or down the hall, to yeah. if you're in an apartment, walk down, check your mail, come back. Yep. Maybe do it two, three times a day. But get up and move around. Yes. And there's always, I, I, I believe there's always somewhere to go if you want to. And, and mm -hmm. like you said, it may be just a couple short strides in your living room if you have a small area mm -hmm. or around that kitchen, down the hallway. But get moving and take those steps because you, you really do need to use it. A lot of people, uh, we take people to Walmart mm -hmm. in different places and they love to get out and do that because not only are they fulfilling their exercise needs, but the socialization as mm -hmm. well and all of their sensory because mm -hmm. there's so much to see there, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a one-stop shop. Oh boy. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot. So prevention, um, but we have to remember that falls should be considered a symptom rather than a diagnosis. Yes. Um, so that uh, basically when somebody presents with a, a history of falls, let's find out what the causes are. Right. That is the bottom line. Yep. Why is this person falling? And one thing that is an easy go-to to check out first would be those environmental factors. Yep. Um, looking at loose rugs or mats. Are there any, you know, electrical cords that are trip hazards? Are there wet surfaces? Is it a lighting issue? Is the furniture in the way? Does it need to be moved differently? Um, and then also maybe providing fittings or handholds for people as they're moving about in their home. Something that's not listed are, is pets. Mm. Yes. Yes. That's, that's a, that's a double-edged sword there mm -hmm. because your kitties and your puppies bring you so much joy, so much companionship, mm -hmm. but you have to be careful. I, I know that my stupid cat, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm out there doing chores, that thing has to walk right in front of me. And if I'm carrying two five gallon buckets <clears throat> or a 50 pound sack, that is, I'm, I'm kind of walking funny just to make sure I I kick it out of the way before we both go, <laughs> you know, upside down. And um, that's just, you know, a barn kitty. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we've seen it in a lot of homes that we've helped take care of people. And, and again, they are, they're, they're companions and they love you so much and they just want to be up in your business. <laughs> um, but you just have to be smart about it and always paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So talking about kind of power and balance, right? Mm -hmm. So exercise. Um, patients should be encouraged to keep active and to exercise as much as possible. It's going to strengthen muscles and maintain joint position. Yep. Uh, elderly people who have uh, taken a fall uh, will lose their confidence and become less active. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do to work around that? <clears throat> uh, there is a lot of equipment available. Mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about handholds around mm -hmm. the house. Yep. Um, boy, they have them where they just have suction cups nowadays, you know, or have the handyman come in and, and put them into the wall. Um, you need, you can get power chairs that can stand somebody up yep. so they're not poop by the time they get out of the chair. Right. Uh, what about having the walker, yep. a cane, uh, walking sticks? Mm -hmm. You know, I know that uh, when grandma first um, was starting to get a little unsteady on her feet, they didn't say cane or any of that. What they said is, let's go get you those walking sticks. So they were cute. Yes. And you just walked along with them, but it's just enough. Yeah, it just a, uh, helps just you with a little bit of balance and balance. provides a little bit of mental security mental. as well. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it can be mental for sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Neurological problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just another assessment done by a physician. Yep. Minor strokes can cause weakness and Parkinson's disease and all of these different, you know, brain diseases. Once again, when you find out 
if there was a specific reason, like what you just mentioned, then what tools are we going to use to help that person? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and so the, the first step is why are the falls happening? Mm -hmm. Alcohol. Oof. Yeah. We've actually had to deal with this. We, we had a gentleman that really, really liked his, his, uh, toddy, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, But more than one. And, and it was really a problem because, um, the, he didn't have any nighttime care. Right. So by the time we'd get there in the morning, (sighs) it was, it was very scary for our caregivers to wonder what they were going to walk into right. and not only falling, but, um, having accidents and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just part of his disease. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not judging him at all. It was just one of those things where we had to insist with the kids that the dad get more care. Yes. Because it, it, we could not ask our caregivers to go in and wonder every day right. if this person was still with us. Yep. And it does come down to that. Um, we have a responsibility to be able to provide for people's health and safety in their home. Mm-hmm. And if we are not able to do that, whether it's, you know, something on our end or whether it's, you know, decisions that are being made in the home, um, you know, we have to evaluate that and say, Hey, we, we can't, we can't be a part of this if, yeah. you know, Yep, it's a hard decision, but I also thankfully he. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, we say we helped save his life. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yep, thankfully we helped save his life, and he's where he needed to be or yeah. needs to be to be safe. Yeah, they talk about loss of consciousness and drop attacks, mm-hmm. visual disturbances, we uh, medications, um, and truly, when you want to um, get all those inv- investigations to figure it out that thorough medical history like we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that can include everything from just basic blood tests to your analysis. Boy, I'll tell you, how often is somebody acting goofy or off balance or just not their normal? And it's because they have a bladder infection. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, when you're, that's always like the go-to, that, you gotta, is it a UTI? <laughs> it's amazing that when you're younger, if you have a UTI, you know, you don't feel good. It, you know, it kind of just happened, but man, for our elderly, they get a blood, um, a urinary tract infection and they, it really it's rocks just, their world. Oh yeah. Havoc. Just yeah. Havoc. Um, EC, uh, EKG mm-hmm. is a very simple test. It's nothing invasive and they can look at the rhythm of your heart. Um, and then also once again, that visual assessment by the, uh, eye doctor. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, I mean, this article says a lot of the same things and we won't keep, keep pounding that home to you. So right, right. I think that we should talk about some of the consequences. You know, there, there are four pretty significant long-term consequences of falls um, that can take place with our older, Amer- or older adults. Um, just injury in general, right? Yeah. You go down and whether it's a break or a strain or a pull or a sprain, um, it it's just it, hard to recover. It can impact their whole <laughs> whole way of living. Yes. Because that then funnels into that reduced independence. Yeah. And I think that's something that, um, our, we, we just fear the most is losing independence. Oh yeah. 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 What, what, what were we capable of doing and what can we not do now? And then with that, it, this is all so convoluted. <laughs> it just, it runs in one thing into another yes. because not only physically are you unable to do it, but you don't want to admit that. And yep. so pride becomes a deal. And I've got one family right now that, uh, boy, dad is bound and determined that he's going to take care of mom. Mm-hmm. He's got his own issues, but that pride factor, you know, he just is really, the kids are struggling. Yeah. And so that is a, it compounds it. <laughs> For sure. Well, and once you have, have a fall, um, unfortunately it can at times lead to multiple falls. Yeah. Yeah. And, and truly to uh, round out that section, uh, basically it doesn't just affect the person. It affects everybody. Yeah. I, I know that when, um, grandma was unsteady on her feet, my aunts were crazy. My mother was worried about it. Every time mother was, grandma was going to get up to go to the potty. Everybody was worried (laughs) if she was going to make it to the potty fine, (laughs) you know? And so then of course, when you know that your mother is freaked out about grandma, you're worried about it. (laughs) And so pretty soon the whole family is all worried about every time that grandma's going to (laughs) move. So it's not just affecting the elder. It it affects everybody. So what are we going to do to get on top of this chaos? I think we can just round out with, uh, we've got 15 ways that you can help reduce the fall risk and help prevent falls. Again, understanding that 
sometimes falls are going to happen no matter what you do to mitigate it. Mm-hmm. But um, starting in the bathroom. Yep. Yep. Look, look there. There's so many things to do. Do you need a, uh, a shower, a shower chair, not only just one that you sit in, but maybe you can even get one that's longer that if they're scared to step over mm-hmm. the bath tub, right. have so them sit down and then scooch in, themselves yeah. in um, cause then they're down already. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of uh, um, a mat at the bottom or the little cute fish that they used <laughs> to put on there, yes. you know, that are no slip things, yep. lots of handhelds, a handheld, handheld shower mm-hmm. head to take off so yep. that they're not having to get up and down to, to rinse off and then ask for help. Yes. And don't forget once you're done with the shower, the bath, mm-hmm. wipe up those wet surfaces. True. <laughs> True. Because we can do all of these preventative things in the shower while it's taking place. But then if we just leave a, you know, a slippery mess on the floor, um, that can be a problem. Yep. Yep. Uh, stairs mm-hmm. are a big deal. Big, um, big deal. And so there's a lot of different ways to counteract stairs. I did a home visit a couple weeks ago. And uh, basically there was a tragedy in the house because somebody had a problem with the stairs. Mm-hmm. Um, but m- most of the living was as the living portion of the house was in the basement. And so I said, how much of that can you move up here? So you're all on one level, right? Or do you need to invest in one of those chairs that yep. goes up and down? Mm-hmm. And, and so lots to think about there, but th- uh, we've seen other cool things where people will put, um, reflective light or different colors, yes, just something to trick almost trick your brain yeah so you can see the oh gosh even here at the office (laughs) speaking of falls (laughs) um that one time I missed the bottom and you were Sarah you were upstairs and her I know you heard me but it was like everybody was like waiting to make sure that um I said I was okay before because everybody just froze the, and the I just, air got completely sucked out of the building. <laughs> I just laid there. But the, wor- th- the worst thing of it was the sound because I had my hydro flask with me. So that's bouncing off the walls and here's this big old thud. <laughs> right. And of course, you just don't immediately say anything. You just have to sit there and make sure you're not completely <laughs> broken. Yeah. Well, and it probably felt like forever to you, but I think there was like half a second <laughs> of dead silence. And then you said, Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness yeah grace oh. that was so bad but it's that last step where in my mind I hit I, I mean I I hang on to the rails now so I fail it won't happen again right. because I'm making don't. sure that I don't just space it out I've done that before though when you think you know you've got your muscle memory going and you think you've you've hit the last step or you're you know yep <laughs> yeah yeah and that's an enabled body person yeah or semi able bodied person. One thing that, um, you know, after we've talked about my grandma Fisher having had COVID and talking about the exercise and things like that, and then stairs, one thing that we're doing now with grandma is, um, if it's a bigger set of stairs, we're making sure that there are two people there to assist her up. So oh, she's yeah. still doing them, but mm-hmm. she's not doing them unassisted. And mm-hmm. then like at my mom's house, there's just a couple steps to get inside. So mom can help her up those. But we were talking about it and even that little bit, just, you know, going up those couple of steps to get into mom's house and go have dinner, that's exercise. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Actually, now that we're talking about this, I have had two different family members that have gone to public places Mm -hmm. where they were parked and they went to step up one step and just ate it. Mm. And so just one step is even too much sometimes. Yeah. So don't take it for granted that they're fine. Just because you can jump up that with not even thinking about yep. it, probably just be there. Yeah. Something that's super relevant in Montana in January is to make sure you shovel snow mm-hmm. and get ice off of your stairs yeah. or walkways. Right. Um, and then also make making sure that your handrails are tight and in good working order. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Uh, using that caner <laughs> walker. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad, oh gosh, speaking of uh, somebody with a bunch of pride, um, when he was needing a little bit more help with, with walking, he wasn't going to use a cane or one of those, I don't know what it is, it's the cane, but it the has quad, the, the quad. quad. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, anyway, I went to Murdoch's and they had these walking sticks and they were, it was a really beautiful wood walking stick, quite high. And then around the top, there was rawhide. 
and then it, you know where you can put your hand in and mm-hmm. hold it but it had more of a manly flair maybe mm-hmm. but he loved that thing and he used it all the time yeah and but it also helped and but it didn't have to be a cane right it, w- it was a walking stick so mm-hmm. in his mind it was okay to use that absolutely yeah um yeah. make sure that you tuck away all of your extension cords don't leave anything out yeah. um and then if there's extra furniture about and you can put that away that might will probably help with falls. The other thing though I've heard is we get so used to how our furniture is set up and we get that muscle memory that at times even moving something by just a couple of inches can really throw somebody off. So if you are making a change, especially a drastic change, um, you know, you need to make sure that, that the person who's going to be living in that environment is aware of it. Oh my goodness. I used, I do that every night because if I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I am so ticked off because I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to go to sleep. So I keep my <laughs> eyes closed as I walk clear to the bathroom. Yes. And if Mike's shoes are in the middle of the floor or I didn't shove the <laughs> chair in and I uh, get so mad because all I want to do is go to the bathroom and get back to bed and don't wake up. I really don't want to wake up. <laughs> Same. Oh. Yeah, oh, I get goodness. that. <laughs> okay. Um, footwear is huge. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, lots of doctors have specialty footwear <laughs> and um, for diabetics and all mm-hmm. of that. So really find out. It's got to be snug. It can't be flip-flopping around. Um, truly, Velcro is wonderful. Yep. Yep. And and make sure that they, they fit not too tight, though, to rub. Right. And so lots to think about there. My, my mom and grandma, they're really good. They... Um, if they come over during the winter, they always wear their boots to get in the house, but then they always bring their, like their inside, I think they wear Birkenstocks Mm -hmm. and that's what grandma has for her house slippers. Yeah. Well, even socks, Mm -hmm. um, you have to be careful that you don't slip. Yep. And so there are the, like the ones that you get at the hospital where they've got the sticky on the bottom. Yep. Yep. You better, better think about that. Yeah. And they're only like $500 if you purchase one of those from the hospital. (laughs) So let's not do that. Let's purchase them at Walmart for $2.99. There you go. (laughs) Um, If lighting is an issue, just make sure that you install better lighting, put in night lights, whatever that looks like, just Mm -hmm. to have good visibility. Mm -hmm. And then once again, keep your senior active. Get out there and walk. Just enjoy the weather. If it's it's winter time, mm-hmm. go somewhere like the grocery store. Um, we have a couple of malls here mm-hmm. that there's a lot of open space. Yes. So really, it's just a matter of getting going. Yep, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Cool. I think that kind of Boy. wraps it up. I think we said the same thing 14 different ways, and yep, but hopefully but it drives it home. Drives it home. One <laughs> way we said it, one way or the other. It, 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 it was something that somebody needed to hear. Absolutely. Well, I, um, in tribute to the legendary Betty White, Mm. as I was looking through good news stories and Upworthy and things like that, I came across a quote from her that I really hoped I could share on today's episode. So, um, (laughs) Betty White says, this was in an interview with Katie Couric. She said, kindness and consideration of somebody besides yourself keeps you feeling young. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. She was an incredible woman. Oof. She was incredible. Yeah. (laughs) So fun. Oh, well, I love that. Thank you. Yes. So if, if you listeners out there have anything you would like to submit to us, a verse or an uplifting story or a grandma saying, we'd love to hear from you. Um, please go subscribe. You can listen to us on Spotify, Google podcasts, Apple podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube. Um, go and join our Apaga Care and Share group and join in the conversation. And yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You tell, you've got to tell people about our podcast and it's so easy. I just had a situation uh, back to my doctor's appointment the <laughs> other day. And while I was in there for the exam, um, a nurse had to be present as well. And so I'm yakking and telling her about my podcast and right there, she got on her phone and um, liked us Aww. so that she would follow us on podcast. Yeah. So it was that simple. Yep. It's, it's not hard guys. Yep. <laughs> Share the word. Just, just get out there and do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Julie, and peace out, Girl Scouts. Yes, have a good day.